Greetings, I'm Harvey Langholz coming to you today from the Peace Operations Training Institute headquarters in Williamsburg, Virginia, in the United States. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this installment of our webinar series, this one on African peacekeeping training. Welcome everyone. I understand there are some technical difficulties in terms of internet connection, so we'll do our best to get through it. Thank you. I'm pleased to welcome our first guest, Major General Akwa, Commandant of the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center. KAIPTC is located in Accra, Ghana, and General Akwa comes to us today from his offices there. I'm also pleased to note that KAIPTC has been a huge user of the National Training Center eLearning Platform, NPCELP, recording over 1,250 enrollments during the past year. The most demanded course has been human rights. So uh, congratulations on that. I'm glad to see you blending our POTI e-learning into your classroom courses, uh, and it's good to see you today. Welcome. First, may I ask you to please share with our viewers some of the latest developments of things happening at KAIPTC. Right. Um, let me first give a background to the KAIPTC. Uh, we've been in existence for about 10 years, celebrated 10 years last year, and uh, we have, as a result of experiences garnered over the last 10 years, revised our strategic plan and uh, developed a new strategic plan with a new vision and a new mission, uh, all centered around an effort to become the leading and the preferred center of excellence and as far as peacekeeping training is concerned. Uh, we're looking more into areas of uh, training, education, and research. And we try to link our academic side with our training side so that training is always um, informed by research carried out by uh, professionals within the academic affairs and the research. So this has been the major um, shift in what used to be the case uh, previously. So that's just the, the current uh, drive of Kofian. What are recent innovations you're working on at KAIPTC? Uh, still talking on the, um, the strategic plan because all the new things, the new concepts, new innovations are captured within uh, that strategic plan. Um, we've institutionalized the learning management system that is currently on trial and uh, we are doing this uh, thankfully in collaboration uh, with you and taking advantage of the POTI uh, platform to help drive this particular um, system that we think is going to make a whole lot of difference in our output uh, come uh, the next uh, decade. Uh, this learning management system comprises four aspects. First, we're looking at the database. Secondly, cost management, within which we will do an evaluation of our cost packages. Then the alumni platform, so that we can reach out to all the personnel who have passed through the Kofiana International Peacekeeping Training Center. And just by way of information, on the average, annually we train about a thousand uh, participants. So over the past few years, we've done a about 11,000, and we'd like to have this database to be able to reach out to them. And finally, it is the e-learning that we are now developing. So that is one major um, innovation that we've undertaken here in Kofiana. Of course, agenda mainstreaming is also very important in any institution such as ours. We have uh, developed our agenda policy, which we rolled out uh, last month. We have also developed a new communication strategy. We are working on a marketing strategy. And uh, our web profile, the workforce is also being reshaped so that we can fit the numbers that we have here into our, our, our training uh, program. Finally, the academic aspect of our training, as I said, is also very important. We run currently a master's program in conflict, peace, and security and also in gender peace and security. We have introduced an executive master's program in conflict, peace and security to take care of very busy 
professionals who are unable to do a full-time course. And in addition, we have uh, a certificate course in gender uh, around conflict, peace, and security. So all these are coming together to help drive the vision of making the center the preferred uh, center of excellence for the delivery of African peace and security training. As I mentioned earlier, I'm very glad to see so many KAIPPC enrollments in the National Training Center eLearning platform. Please tell us how you have achieved this very clear success. Well, I'll attribute this to maybe three factors. Number one, thanks to Porti, because you offer these courses free of cost to our participants, and therefore they don't have to spend. Secondly, uh, there's the unlimited use of the facility. So it is not restricted to a particular course that they are undoing. But once they get on to the party platform, they are able to do other courses apart from what they are actually enrolled to do. And then thirdly, we undertake a very aggressive marketing and um, advocacy for party in Kofiana to tell all our participants that here is an opportunity they should seize with two hands and uh, get themselves adequately educated on matters of peace and security. And thankfully, our, our participants have taken this home and have uh, really rolled out to take advantage of, of the, the free system. Mm -hmm. So in all, we would like to thank you, Porti, for, for, for the opportunity given us. What are some of the challenges you see to the current security situation? And what is KAIPPC doing to address these? Very well. Um, until the outbreak of the Ebola, we were just confronted with what I would say uh, predictable, normal security challenges of uh, um, piracy that is well known both on the Gulf of Guinea, the coast of Guinea and on Somalia coast, that is well known. And once uh, we know about this, we take measures to, to try to address them by running courses on counter piracy. Uh, we also run courses on terrorism. On the west coast of Africa is a challenge, and we do run courses on that also. But uh, what has really hit us hard is the Ebola and its impact on the way we do business here. Uh, regrettably, we have had to scale down on some of the courses that we run in order not to um, escalate the problem. It is not as if you close down the center entirely. We still do some courses, but we have to manage the, the crisis by the screening participation, participants from coming into the center, and also um, sending our teams to the field, our mobile training teams to uh, the virus areas has been affected because of this. But we are seeing a change, uh, and an increasingly convincing development within the affected areas that uh, very soon will uh, be turning the curve. And we hope that when that happens, we shall be able to go full stream on what we do here at the center. Next, I'm pleased to welcome Colonel Festus Abugay, retired, Executive Director of the African Peace Support Trainers Association, or APSTA. APSTA's headquarters are located in Nairobi, Kenya, and he joins us today from there. Welcome, good to see you. Now, my first question for you, Festus, is give us the background. How was APSTA formed? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Langost, for having me on this webinar. To go straight to the question, the idea of the APSTA dates back to 1998, when military officers from six of our current member institutions, namely Accord, ISS, the KPSTC then, which is the Kenya Peace Support Training Center, now the IPSTC, 
Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, the South African National War College, and the SADC RPTC attended one of the IAPTC AGMs in Malta. That was 1998. So that was when these individuals came up with the idea of forming an African chapter of the IAPTC. So in 2001, the idea was concretized. And in 2002, um, Appstar was established, I mean, formally launched. And the Articles of Association or the Constitution, the first Constitution, was established in 2002. Now, to fast forward a bit, um, in 2008, Appstar established an MOU with the African Union Commission for collaborative support to um, the needs of the African Union. We currently have about 18 members, many of whom are very active participants. And we have a presidency which is currently the commandant of the National, Def National Defense College Nigeria, Admiral Agolo. And our patron currently is Ambassador Swad um, Shalabi. The Secretariat of the APSA is located at Nairobi uh, currently. Our current membership, as I said, is about 18 uh, from all the four out of the five regions of Africa. So it's only the Central African region where we don't have any membership. We have membership from West Africa, from Southern Africa, from Eastern Africa, where the Secretariat is, and then from North Africa. Now, North Africa is a triple CPA, and West Africa is the NDCN that I've mentioned already, plus two other NGOs, the IMPACT and the EAN, Environmental Aid Nigeria. Now, in Ghana, we have the Kofi Annan Center and the Legon Center for International Affairs and Diplomacy, LESIAD. And then Eastern Africa, we have the IPCS, Institute for Peace and Conflict Studies in Tanzania, the Institute for Peace and Security Studies, IPSS, in Addis Ababa, along with the ISS office in Addis Ababa. Then we have the, uh, sorry, the IPSTC, International Peace Support Training Center here in um, Nairobi. In Southern Africa, we have the ISS, which is the head office. We have a court. And then we have AFDEM, which is based in um, Zimbabwe. Now, I think it's very important for our viewers to know a bit about the vision and mission of the APSTA. Our reformulated vision is to be the premier Pan-African Association promoting a peaceful and stable Africa. And along with that, our mission statement says that APSA exists to facilitate the development of African capacity for peace and security through a number of platforms that is coordination, advocacy, harmonization, and standardization of training, as well as research and policy implementation support amongst its member institutions. So it was for this reason that in 2008, the AU established the MOU with the APSTA. And as you rightly said, APSTA has a few um, partners, uh, key amongst them being the POTI, but also the ENTRY, the European Union Civilian Crisis uh, Management. So these are the two partners currently that we have. We have other partners without MOU, so like the Save the Children International, the ICRC, and currently we are engaged in talks with La Francophonie, um, among others. Please share with our viewers some of the latest developments of the African Peace Support Trainers Association. But in very recent times, um, APSTA as a whole has tried to reposition itself at the center of affairs of the African Union 
was for a number of years were a bit you know distant from the african union so beyond the mou that i mentioned in 2012 the au established a funding agreement to provide funding for us on the basis of the provisions of this funding agreement uh, abster has had to now listen to the african union about what it needs are so as you would recall in 20 13, 2014, AFSTA was invited to undertake the training needs assessment study for the African Standby Force. Now, that report was submitted to the African Union Commission uh, in January this year. Now, during this year, we have undertaken two workshops, um, one at Kofi Annan Center in May to harmonize uh, police pre-deployment training. In the last one, end of September, early October, to establish the first ever um, African Union integrated mission planning training. We should have followed this up with uh, integrated mission support training, but we ran out of time and space, so we've had to schedule it for uh, next year. Now we're currently undertaking on the research side, a study of African conflicts, which we, we call the comprehensive review of African conflicts and regional interventions. So there are about 14 experts, including academia and practitioners who are undertaking the case studies for some of the major contemporary conflicts that attracted other African Union or regional interventions. So that is going to serve as, if you like, the output will serve as a handbook, especially at the higher levels of training and education, especially the senior mission um, leadership um, training. Let me end on the latest developments by drawing our viewers' attention to the establishment of what again Abstar calls senior African mission managers. There's a database currently with about 95 entries of all the senior Africans who have participated in other UN and or African Union missions. So you're talking like Dr. Ebin Chambers himself, who until his appointment was the JSR, Joint Special Representative um, for UNAMIT. Uh, and going much, much uh, back into time, um, General Eskin, you know, who was one of the leading peacekeepers, uh, pioneers, if I should say. That database, I think, should serve as a very useful tool for individuals and institutions that may want to engage with some of these uh, practitioners who have, you know, performed creditably in the peacekeeping um, environment. What are some of the recent innovations you're working on at APSTA? That, that is a very tough one because it makes me think along the lines of, um, if you like, this uh, um, satellite that chased uh, the comet, you know, and landed successfully. Um, but to go away from the scientific notions of innovations, um, you might have guessed from some of the things that I've said already that APSTA is trying to identify what the needs of the African Union and other stakeholders are within the region. So there are initiatives like what I call the Centers of Excellence um, Annual Training Reports which would be a compilation of all the training activities that our members might have undertaken during the year. But this is very early days yet for this uh, Centers of Excellence Annual Training Report. I've mentioned the Senior African Mission Managers already, and we also want to establish a matrix of, um, let me call them, training and research experts in a number of thematic areas. So if you want, for instance, POC experts or DDR SSR experts, 
or child protection experts who may either be trainers or may be researchers. This is an idea that we've mooted once again. Uh, it's not materialized uh, yet. Now, all of these may find themselves into what I call the APSTA training compendium. In other words, a curricula, a compendium of all the curricula, training curricula that our members undertake. So it becomes a reference tool for our stakeholders who might wish to know which of our members is doing what, so they can engage with them as and when uh, necessary. I think one of the innovations that um, I have thought about, which is about to materialize, is a revamping of the, the AppStar website to make it a bit more interactive. So we are currently just about receiving support from the African Union, from the European Union, through the African Union, called the short-term expert facility. So an expert is going to be deployed to the Secretariat to assist us to you know, revamp the, the website, uh, as I've said. And once that is done, I think we should have a platform now um, to do, if you like, um, an online quarterly journal, and then place Absta uh, in good stead, if you like, for instance, to host the e-learning library for the um, African Standby Force, uh, among others. The last drive that I think we have embarked on is a, a membership expansion drive in two dimensions. First of all, I mentioned that there is no representation from Central Africa. So it is our hope that this year at the conference in AGM, we would get at least one member uh, from Cameroon, which is the Gendarme Training School uh, for ECAS. And then multidimensionally to bring in a few more national police organizations. And we lucky that we might have the Namibia Police Force, the Gambia Police Force, the Ghana Police Service, and the Federal Republic Nigeria Police Service to attend the AGM and hopefully apply for, for membership. So these are some of the innovations, not the scientific ones, but in terms of institutional management uh, that we are thinking about. Is APSTA open to further partnerships? I think the only comment I would wish to make is that um, APSTA is open to partnerships with, with all stakeholders who might be interested to work with the APSTA. Now, stakeholders whose mandates and objectives include building capacity, African capacity for peacekeeping, peace support operations. So it doesn't really matter whether these stakeholders are African institutions or non-African institutions like uh, Koti. As long as your mandate focuses on Africa, I think that is where we have convergence. So in the next couple of days, um, APSTA would be um, having discussions with NATO Defense College, the NDC for instance, to see how the two institutions, that is a NATO Defense College, not NATO as a whole, and APSTA uh, could collaborate, especially in the area of uh, PSO uh, research. I mentioned the La Francophonie, um, as you would know, the only Francophone member currently of the APSTA is the EMP ABB, the Mali Peacekeeping School and Leon Blonde um, in, in uh, Mali. But we're seeking to expand that membership and we think that by working closely with the uh, La Francophonie, we may be able to attract some of the Francophone members from Senegal, from Benin, from Togo, um, as well as the Cameroonian institution that I've already mentioned to take up membership of the, of the APSTA. So these are some of the broad um, agendas of, of the APSTA that we're not uh, reclusing ourselves or restricting ourselves only to uh, African partners, but trying to work 
uh, with all the stakeholders. And I think I should mention the RECs and RMs. So in all the workshops or the other processes that I mentioned, we have, through the African Union, invited all the RECs and RMs, including the only African mission now, which is the AU mission in Somalia, to participate. So Somalia, for instance, or Emerson brings on board the field perspectives and experiences to complement some of, if you like, the desk, the desk, use of the desk uh, perspectives that other researchers or experts might bring to the table. Yeah. Once again, thanks for having me on this webinar. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you very much to all of our featured guests for participating in this discussion. We appreciate your time, expertise, and your ongoing service in the interest of peace. And to our students and friends, thank you for viewing this webinar. This installment will be archived on our website and available to all for future viewing. I'm Harvey Langholz, the Executive Director of the Peace Operations Training Institute. Thank you for watching this installment in our webinar series.